in layers so you can get a hold of it. The most important thing you can do this morning is listen. Uh, listen intently and, 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 and intensely. And I want you to pay attention to what's, what's going to come forth in your hearing this morning. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Let's read verse 16 out loud together. Ready? Read. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Amplified says, The Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit. Now, that's something I want you to understand that as a born-again Christian, your spirit is together with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is together with the Holy Spirit. So you have your born-again spirit with the Holy Spirit bringing testimony to you of your true identity. Your spirit, along with the Holy Spirit, together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. So you have your born-again spirit, along with the Holy Spirit, assuring us of our identity, our identity as children of God. Now, for the last few weeks, we began to talk about your identity and how behavior won't line up with, think, with the things of God until you understand the identity that lines up with the things of God. You have to believe your true identity, and then your behavior will change. But if you continue to allow your behavior to be that which determines your identity, then you may never come to the place of knowing who you really are. As a born-again Christian, this is who you are. You are a child of God. You have a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. First John chapter 4, 17, what's your true identity? As he is in heaven... As Jesus is in heaven, so are we here in this world. That is your true identity. You're going to have to go even beyond your family name, and you're going to have to come to the place of recognizing this is who I am. I am a spirit being recreated in the image of God. Say that out loud with me. I am a spirit being recreated in the image of God. Say it again. I am a spirit being recreated in the image of God. That's first base where identity is concerned. You have to understand and believe that, that I am, I am, I am not my body. I am not my soul. I am a spirit recreated in the image of God. Does everybody hear what I just said? And now, 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 he says, now, if you'll listen carefully, your spirit along with the Holy Spirit will assure you of that. That is your true identity. Now, for Christian people, what we experience mentally and emotionally in our souls from day to day can be very different from what we're called to set our minds on concerning our human spirits. What we find ourselves experiencing mentally, what we find ourselves experiencing emotionally in our souls every day, the, the, the things that are going on in between your two ears every day, mentally and emotionally, are going to be so far different from what the Bible tells us how, how we should be setting our mind on the things that are above. Well, Colossians chapter 3 and 2 says, set your mind on the things that are above and not the things that are on the earth. The Amplified says, set your mind and to keep it set. What, what is on the line when we ignore that advice? What is on the line? Because you know God's the most purposeful being around. So why is he telling me to set my mind on the things that are above and then amplifies it and says, set your mind, keep it set, as if this is, this is what I need to be striving for every day, setting my mind on the things that are above, keeping my mind set on the things that are above. You know, uh, you're, as goes your thinking, so goes your life. As a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. And so we understand also that how you feel is tied to how you think, you see. It just everything in your life and everything that you experience in life is, 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 is tied to how you think. 
And he says, now, I, I want you to do this. Now, I want you to set your mind uh, on the things that are above. Keep it set on those things because you're going to have some things going on in your soul that's going to challenge everything about how you live. Now, let's uh, review just for a moment. We know that man is a what? Spirit. Say out loud, I'm a spirit being. I'm a spirit being. Now, now, listen to this. This is very important. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body, but he has a soul. Your spirit has a nature. Your body has a nature, but not your soul. Your soul is attached to the nature of your spirit, or it can be attached to the nature of your flesh. Listen to me carefully now. Oh, my goodness. I am a spirit being. I am a spirit being who's been born again. You are a spirit being, and if you've been born again, you have been made in the image of God. You are made just like God. Listen, if you are a born-again person, the day you got saved, what part of you, man is a tripart being or three-part being, man is a spirit. You are a spirit being. Say, I am a spirit being. Am a spirit. You have a soul. Say, I have a soul. I have a soul. Now, your soul is comprised of your mind, your will, and your emotion. Your soul has your thinker, your filler, your chooser. It's, it's your psychology. It's your personality. Your soul is how you, it's, it's, it's your thinking process. It's your, your, your emotions. And, and we know emotions are feelings on the inside. Emotions are feelings on the inside that will direct you somewhere, that will take you somewhere. And think about it. If you've got the wrong emotions going around, your, your emotions are going to be taking you to all these different places. Your emotions, your, the way of thinking, your mind, your will, your emotions, your thinker, your filler, your chooser, Really, how you see life is right up there in, in your soul. Now, what we cannot do is what the church has done for decades, well, more than decades, centuries probably. We cannot continue to use spirit and soul interchangeably as if they are one. I didn't think it was really a big deal, so I mentioned that in times past, but I'm coming to you today, hopefully with evidence and proof that this is a big deal. This is a big deal if a man doesn't see a clear distinction between his soul and his spirit. You know, it's, it's, it's we have a spirit, we have a body, but uh, we have a soul that's not, doesn't have its own nature. Ah, oh, boy. So you have a soul and you live in a body. You live, right now you are alive, you, you have an earth suit on, you have a body that gives you the, uh, the ability to comprehend in a physical world. So without a physical body, you would have no comprehension in, a, in the physical realm. Without a physical body, you couldn't touch things. You couldn't pick up physical things. There would be no comprehension without a physical body. So actually, when death takes place, this is what happens. Your spirit, the real you, along with your soul, moves out of your body. Your body stays here in the physical realm. Your spirit and soul are now in, in spiritual realm comprehension mode. You know what I'm saying? Now what you can't comprehend spiritually in your body, you now can comprehend spiritually now that you are, you are aware that your spirit has separated from your body. So when somebody dies, it's not the fact that they fell asleep their body fell asleep because you, the real life of that body, moved out. You cannot kill a spirit. Do you understand? You cannot kill a spirit. Why? Because that part of you is like God. It's the Zoe life of God. It's eternal life. It's eternal life. Now, you have to determine where you're going to spend eternal life. And that's, that's the deal. You can't kill a spirit, but you're going you're gonna to continue to exist in, in one realm or another realm once you leave your body. And you determine that by one decision. If you die and you have not had your spirit, if, 
uh, removed and if, you, if you've not gotten born again to get the new creation, when that, that spirit that you were born with that's dead to God but alive to sin is going to hell. But when you make Jesus the Lord of your, the, the Lord of your life, and I said that right, the Lord of your house, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life and you die, see, your spirit is brand new. Glory be to God. And when you die, your spirit, brand new spirit, is heaven ready. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you heaven ready? And I say this out loud. Say this out loud. I am not my body. I am not my soul. I am my spirit. That's who I am. I am my spirit. Now, to understand what I just explained to you will now bring about clear comprehension about a whole lot of scriptures and a whole lot of things that we've seen in the Bible, and we have uh, misunderstood those things, and, and those things have been used to condemn us uh, pretty badly. So let's get, let's get into the Word because I want you to know where these things are. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll tell you the most important thing I ever had to say to you. <laughs> I started to come in here with some sweats on and a turkey leg and just sit down and just talk to you to let you know, let you know we need to talk. We got to talk this morning. Everybody with me? Ooh, Jesus. Now, the sermon, if I, I have the sermon, it's written, it's one line. Here's what I want to say to you. It's one line. But it takes six pages to get ready for that one line. I tell you, if I told you that one line, you just look at me like, and? But as we work our way up to that one line, oh, suki suki now. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Let's, uh, uh, no, uh, verse 23. Let's read verse 23 out loud together. Ready to read. And the very God of peace do what? Sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, watch this, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the three parts of man. That's the three-part man is a tripart being. He is a spirit. He possesses a soul, his mind, his will, and emotions. He lives in a physical body. But the question this morning is, is there a distinction or a difference between the soul and the spirit? Is there? Do you believe there is? All right, let's go to Hebrews because Hebrews gives us a little insight. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12 creates the curiosity of digging deeper into this to see what, what the distinctions are. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and what? So there's, there's obviously, according to this scripture, there, there, there is the, the, the creation of the curiosity. If you can divide the soul and the spirit, there's got to be a difference between the soul and the spirit. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Now, so let's deal now with the soul, put more information there, then let's deal with the spirit, discover the distinctions, and then put them together and see why we're having to, to, to make this distinction. Uh, let's define the soul once again. The soul is our psychology. It is our mind. It is our will. It is our emotions. It is our personality. It is our thinker, our feeler, our chooser. In our souls, we experience wild fluctuations of thought. In our soul, we will experience a, a, a fluctuation of emotions as we go from the height of ecstasy to the depths of despair within a moment. You've ever experienced that before? Within a moment, you can go from one position to the next one. You can walk around being happy, and within a moment, try to figure out, how did I, why, why, why I don't feel good? What's going on here? Your soul can do that. Your soul can do that. Our feelings follow our thoughts, and sometimes our thoughts are all over the place. Now, you got an issue if, if your, your feelings, they, they follow your thoughts. Remember when I taught on the anatomy of life, words and images will produce the way you think. The way you think will produce the way you feel. So if you want to change the way you feel, what do you have to do? Change the way you think. But you're not going to change the way you think unless you change the words and images that you're exposing yourself to. So now watch this. 
if we are not changing, we are not growing. But we can't change if we don't renew our mind with the Word of God. We have to renew our mind with the Word of God. Uh, Romans chapter 12 says, be ye, renew be ye transformed or changed, how? By the renewing of your mind. So without renewing our mind with the Word of God, there is no change. Without change, there is no growth. Let me show that again. Without renewing the mind with the Word of God, and I'm specifically talking about renewing your mind with the Word of God. What is renewing the mind? It's exchanging your thoughts and your opinions and your way of thinking for God's thoughts, His opinions, and for His way of thinking. When you take your thought life and you put it on top of the Word and they don't match, you don't try to change the Word, you let the Word change the way you think. And renewing the mind is not a one-time uh, event. It's not something you do one time and that's it. Renewing the mind is a lifetime process. It's something you're, we're going to be doing until Jesus comes back. There's no such thing as a, well, you know, that guy's a preacher, so he's renewed his mind. Uh-uh. He must continue to renew his mind. Now, I knew that this was exactly right, but I could not, I, I have not, I, I, I didn't discover why this was so vital and, and, and essential part of what we're supposed to do as a Christian. And I'm saying to you, you can get born again, you can start coming to church, but if you, if you neglect to renew your mind, here's what happens. Every time you neglect the process of renewing the mind, you're going to make your life subject to the contrary, to the opposite, to the sin. If you don't renew your mind, you can't change in the direction God's trying to get you to change in. And I see so many people, they get born again, they become Christian people, and they wonder, well, how come I'm still the same? How come this hadn't changed? How come I don't feel any better? How come this hadn't changed? Where is God? Maybe God don't care much about me as much as he cares about you. And that's not the issue. The issue is that one Christian's consistently renewing his mind, and you're sitting there wondering, where's God? God is going to show up in the process of you renewing your mind. And, and, and when we fail to do that, or we don't understand to do that, or we're too lazy to do that, or we don't want to do that. See, people don't see, they don't have a real reason to come to church anymore. Because, you know, church for most people was based in religion, was based in the entertainment, was based in the choir and the music, and they don't see a real value uh, to come to church and hear the Word of God. And the value, I'm about to explain it to you, the value is the information you give to your soul. That if you don't give this information, the Word of God, to your soul, your soul is going to be a part of your destruction. An unrenewed soul is going to be used, but it's not going to be used to create a life that expresses Jesus Christ. It is going to be used as something that will kill, steal, and destroy you. So where does this put you? Hearing this right now, I, I need you to understand, praise God you came to church today. You know what? You are now involved in the process of renewing your mind. Hallelujah. You're involved in the process of renewing your mind. When you go home and read your Bible, you're involved in the process of renewing your mind. When you stick a CD in, you're involved in the process of renewing your mind. When you meditate on your little scripture for the day, you're involved in the process of renewing your mind. When you finally got your life to a place where you say, no matter what happens in my life, the first move I'm going to make is, what does the Word have to say about this? Bills are due. What does the Word have to say about this? Conflict in marriage. What does the Word have to say about this? Conflict with children. What does the Word have to say about this? Conflict in other relationships. What does the Word have to say about this? Conflict in my business, my ministry. What does the Word have to say about this? What's happening? You've already committed yourself that I'm not going to think any other way than what the Word says. And that's a process. That's a process. But why? Why? Why is it so vital that I load my mind daily, that I daily, see, he daily loads us with benefits, the Bible says. Why do I load my mind daily with, uh, with the Word of God? Now, you know, some old, bro some old brother coming here, well, I'm under grace, I ain't got to renew my mind. No, 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 no. Grace does not empower you to be a failure, and it doesn't empower you not to do the things you need to do to equip yourself. Grace empowers you to live a life that's pleasing to God, which means renewing your mind is going to help your life to do what it needs to do to be pleasing with God. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I, do I have your curiosity up a little bit about, well, I renew my mind. Some of you are renewing your mind, so you're going to rejoice on the fact that, well, praise God, no wonder I'm, I'm happy. Don't, don't, you notice, don't you notice a difference, those of you who come to church sometime and don't come to church sometime, don't you know the difference the month you stay out? 
Don't, don't, seriously, don't you notice it? Aren't you a little bit more susceptible to the flesh when you're not reading, when you're not praying, when you ain't heard no word? You know, and then something happens and you, look, you, you consider it two, three more times than what you normally consider it when you're in the word. Even your attitude, isn't it a little off a little bit, you know? Uh, maybe, you know, you're a little touchy a little bit more. You know, hey, what's up? What? I mean, you know, you ain't been in the Word. We can tell you ain't been in the Word. You ain't renewing your mind. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay, so, so this is the soul needing the mind renewed specifically with the Word. I'm not talking about a positive attitude. I'm talking about an attitude that's governed by the Word of God. So our feelings follow our thoughts. If I feel depressed, then it's a thought that's causing me to feel that way. My thinking's cause. If I want to change how I feel, I change the way I think. I don't feel good. Well, you something. What you thinking? Uh, well, I'm thinking this. Well, where'd you get it from? Well, I got it from here. All right. Well, throw that away. Close that book up and open this one up. Now let this be the seed that determines your thinking. And then your thinking from that seed will determine how you feel, and you'll feel all right. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you, make sure I'm in the right place. How many of you ever felt bad? All right. How many, of you remember, how, many, how, how many of you can recall why you felt bad? Okay. And, and, and so, so you can wake up every day, and you can say, well, I'm going to feel bad today. And you know what? You're going to feel bad today. Or you can wake up feeling bad and say, no, nope, no bad days today. Not going to feel bad today. I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to be happy today because I'm going to see good days and I'm going to live good life. Hallelujah, anyhow. Go in there and get you a popsicle. Have a good day. Our soul, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. I want you to gain concept of what I'm getting ready to tell you. Our soul is like a mirror that can reflect anything at any time. Our soul doesn't give us our spiritual nature. Instead, it merely reflects the nature of something else in a given moment. So this explains why we can walk either according to the Spirit, and then we reflect Christ, or according to the flesh, and we reflect sin. In any moment, at any moment that can happen, so these occur as we set our minds one way or the other. We angle our soul mirror. We angle.